Charlie, we expect to learn more about that toxic train derailment and left an Ohio community afraid for their health and safety. Tomorrow, the National Transportation Safety Board says it is releasing its preliminary investigation report. But for the people who live in East Palestine, the idea of returning life back to normal really just seems out of reach, with many still concerned about the air and water safety. Investigative correspondent Rich McHugh is live for us in East Palestine. And Rich, officials are trying to assure the community it's safe and that regular testing is being done. Yeah, despite the all clear from officials here that the water is safe to drink, people are not buying it. They say we need independent testing of their homes, their water, their properties. One of the foremost experts in chemical spills testing was here in town today testing. We caught up with him and what he says may not be of comfort to the residents here in East Palestine. We're going to measure also vinyl chloride, ethyl hexyl acrylate, mm -hmm. isobutylene, and butyl acetates. Independent environmental scientist and chemical spills expert Stephen Petty is on the ground in East Palestine today testing air, water, and soil for residents skeptical of the government giving them the all clear. They're measuring something that doesn't tell you a lot about the individual chemicals. It's done because it's easy and quick to do. <laughs> it's not doesn't cost a lot of money. Petty has been an expert witness in dozens of the top environmental class action lawsuits in the U.S. He says he came to Ohio because he believes independent testing is needed. The question is, are there, are there organic compounds at low levels that are toxic that are a problem? We don't know the answer to that. While testing, we could hear trains passing every minute, a haunting reminder of why we are here. For residents worried about their health and the mixed messages from local and federal government, an independent expert's opinion is welcome. The public can handle negative news. They just want the truth. It's not wrong to tell them we don't know yet. Do you think they're getting the truth here? I don't think they've done enough. I think that they're being told too many positive things given the uncertainties. But it doesn't take an expert on the ground to question the motives of Norfolk Southern and the EPA. Unfortunately, as I look at it, the, the cold hard truth is there's nobody to turn to. Environmental lawyer Stephen Donziger has battled the likes of Chevron and as a warning for the residents of East Palestine. The government has repeatedly, not only since this derailment on February 3rd, but like historically, um, never really dealt directly um, and told the full truth about health risks that are faced by local communities that get hit with these major industrial accidents. I mean, company detonated cancer-causing chemicals over a million pounds, creating a mushroom cloud of poison. And the governor of Ohio, just a few days after this disaster, recommended people go back. There was no scientific basis to make that recommendation. It was more of a political decision to manage the public relations fallout. I don't know what's in the railroad's minds. I, I mean, I don't know what's in their heads. But um, from what I've seen on some of the initial testing, they, they haven't necessarily tested for all the things I think we should be testing for, like the dioxins. And they're not testing for those? To my knowledge, they hadn't. Now, I don't know if you can see, the, the, there's pumps behind me. They're running 24-7. They have been indefinitely. They're working to scrub the water clean, and they're not adding to the argument here that everything is safe, Nicole. All right, you have Rich McHugh live there for us, uh, getting more answers. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.